Hello, this is Tatiana Yakushev, Software Development Lead at Prediction Software. In this video, I am going to show you how you can use Prediction Insight Workbench to work with data from multiple data sources and shape it for predictive analysis. If you did not do this yet, I recommend that you first watch the Prepare and Explore Your Data with Workbench video. Insight Workbench is an environment for data exploration and preparation. Insight Workbench can be used to connect the data from a variety of sources. It can be used to work with small data sets, such as Excel tables, flat files, or Power Pivot tables. It can also be used to work with large data sets, which might be from SQL Server, Hadoop, or any database that supports the ODBC protocol. To get started, Let's open the Customers table from Excel. To do this, I am going to click the New button in the Package group and select From Excel. The table that I want to load is already selected, so I will click OK. And so, Inside Workbench is opened. To make it easier to work with data, Inside Workbench shows a preview. It is important to note that the Insight Workbench doesn't load all the data. It operates on a random sample of the data. The default sample size is 1000 rows. If you want to work with more or less rows, you can change the sample size by clicking in the status bar area and specifying the desired sample size. The data that I'm using for this video has information about customers. So, Let's rename the table to Customers. This table has columns such as age, gender, and home ownership. I can click on any column and see useful statistical information about it, such as what percentage of customers are male, or what columns have high correlation with the age column. Further on the right side of the table, there are several columns that I want to modify. Consider the TV Movie Frequency Code column. It has numbers between 1 and 5. These numbers are codes. I have definitions of the codes in a separate Excel table. Let's load this table into Insight Workbench as well. To add an additional table into Insight Workbench, click on the Data tab at the top and select where you want to load the data from. Since I have information about frequency codes in Excel, I am going to click the From Excel button. In the dialog, I will specify the table that I want to load, namely frequency codes, and click OK. Now I have two tables in the workbench. To replace codes, in the TV Movie Frequency Code column with the corresponding text, I'm going to go back to the Customers table, switch to the Home ribbon, and click Look Up. In the dialog, I will select the Frequency Codes table because that is where I have definitions of the frequency codes. Additionally, I'm going to specify the condition for joining the two tables, so I select where Frequency ID equals to TV Movie Frequency Code. Now I will select the column with the descriptions that I want to include in the Customers table, which is called Frequency. When I click OK, the column TV Movie Frequency Code is hidden, which means that it will not be used by the predictive models unless I explicitly select it. A new column called Frequency is added to the Customers table. I will rename it to TV Movie Frequency to not confuse it with the other frequency columns that I might want to add later. This lookup operation can be repeated multiple times to replace values in other columns that have frequency codes. Each time I can select the existing frequency codes table that is already loaded into the workbench and then specify the appropriate relationship between these tables. Now 
Let's see what needs to be done if I want to include multiple columns in from another table. As you can see, I have a zip code column. To add city, state and other demographic information for each customer, let's load another table into the workbench that has demographic information for zip codes. I have this data in a text file. To load the file into the workbench, click on the Data tab and then click the From Text button. To specify file path, I can click the triple dot button and select the file that I want to load and click Open. To preview the file, change the delimiter and other options, I can click the Advanced button. Everything looks good here, so I will click OK to close the Advanced dialog and click OK again to load the file into the workbench. Now I can add demographic information into the customers table. To do this, I will go back to the customers table, switch to the home ribbon and click refer. In the dialog, I will select the, de the demographic information table, specify the relationship between the tables by the selecting zip code columns from both tables and then Select the columns to be included. I would like to include city, state, and unemployment rate 2010 columns. When I click OK, three new columns are added to the customer's table. Next, I would like to demonstrate how you can work with tables that have one-to-many relationship. To do this, I am going to load the table from SQL Server that has a list of movies that customers watched. To load the data, I am going to go back to the data ribbon. And select from external data. In the dialog, I will specify connection to the database and select the table that I want to load. Workbench is going to load a random sample of rows from the database and show them. You can see that movies table has multiple movies for the same customer. For instance, there are five rows that have customer ID 87723. To add a list of movies for each customer into the customers table, switch back to the home ribbon and click the nest button. As I did several times before, I need to specify a relationship between these tables and choose the columns that I want to include. So I'm going to include movie and price columns. When I click OK, a single column called movies is added to the customer's table. If you paid close attention, you might have noticed a small progress window that was visible for a second. It said loading new data sample. As I mentioned before, Insight Workbench doesn't load all the data. It loads a sample size that you specify or the default, which is 1000 rows. When you try to join two tables together, it is possible that the samples that were loaded for those two tables don't have a match. The customer's table might have a row with customer ID 1, and even though movies table has information for customer ID 1, those rows might not be in the sample. So when you try to add any expression column that pulls data from another table, it gets a better sample for the secondary table that contains rows with the matching IDs. Each cell in the new movies column has a table as its value. I can click on a cell and this cell's table appears at the bottom right portion of the screen. If I want to count how many movies each customer watched, I need to add a new expression column by clicking the Add Expression button and typing the expression equals row count movies. Let's rename it to count. I can perform other operations on the table as well. If I want to get the average movie price for each customer, I can add a new expression column equals average.
movies.price. And let's call this column average movie price. The last feature that I want to demonstrate is how to find all the customers that watched a specific movie. Let's say I want to find all the customers who watched Star Wars. To do this, I'm going to use the Promote button in the Home ribbon. In the Dalek, I will select the table, specify condition for joining the two tables, select the columns that needs to be considered, and finally select interesting values in that column. So I'm going to select the Movies table, select the two customer ID values in the dropdowns, change the value in the last dropdown to Movie, and finally select Star Wars, and click OK. A new column called Star Wars is added to the Customers table. It has Boolean values indicating if customer has watched Star Wars movie or not. As usually, I can see statistical information for the added column. It looks like 15% of customers have watched Star Wars. This concludes our demo of how to prepare data from multiple data sources. Remember that prediction can handle data from any ODBC compliance source. Thank you for watching.